Hello, uh, I'm uh, Dr. Anil Satidas, uh, MO in charge of uh, MDIC, basically anesthesiologist and I've been trained in critical care. So I'm looking after COVID patients in uh, Medical College Toronto and uh, we have uh, uh, almost uh, 100 or sort of patients now in our ICU. Today I will give you a few points uh, regarding stabilization of patients in CFLTC, stabilization as well as is early identification of the deterioration of patients in the primary health, uh, primary CFLTC as, as well as secondary and in centers where you use uh, oxygen but you don't have uh, other devices like uh, ventilation or non-invasive ventilation. So here you should always keep in mind, uh, uh, try to identify okay, the patients who are at high risk. So that is in our guidelines. Okay, So you have to keep always that in mind and when the patient comes to, the, uh, to your hospital or the center, you should note down what are the risks the patient has. So the more number of risks the patient has, definitely more higher the risk the patient would be and you should be following up these patients very closely and most of these patients would be referred because they might uh, fall into category B. So then another important thing that you have to monitor here is the timeline. So everybody will be knowing the timeline. So you have that uh, 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 on yeah, your patient gets a viral infection okay and then he may not have symptoms okay he develops symptoms and then he tests positive maybe after five days. So onset of symptoms is day number. You can take it as day number zero or day number one. Okay, onset of symptoms. So that is very important. Because as you know, in the first five days, you have viral replication or so. So there steroids ideally should not be given. Both inhaled as well as IV steroids should not be given. Okay, so start from the symptomatology rather than when the patient becomes positive. Don't take day one as the day when the patient becomes positive. So you start from, so to take a detailed history. Patient will not tell you. Patient will say, Okay, so if you can just go beside the patient and then dig hard, you might get, uh, I had a bit of feverish hair, okay, some throat irritation was there. I'm going to history returning. So that is the day of starting of symptoms. So uh, initial five days or so you have more of viral replication. After five days, you have that inflammatory uh, cascade setting in that is causing all the problems. Okay. So, uh, so your day should start from the day of symptoms rather than day when the rat or uh, RT-PCR becomes positive. And uh, during your physical examination or taking the history also, you can uh, every day or even twice a day or thrice a day, just ask, and uh, as you know, most of the patient, even if you feel that, we will feel that patient is dyspneic, they would say no. Maybe that is because of the happy hypoxemia sort of uh, thing that would occur in the phenotype L, which would basically would, uh, would be more of a vascular involvement. So the alveoli would be relatively free. It is more of a vascular uh, um, uh, dysregulation of your pulmonary circulation, okay, as well as uh, uh, your hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction, all those things would be abolished and the patient will not have much of symptoms. So, so they would definitely say there is no symptoms, but you have to examine the patient detail, especially look if the patient is using the accessory muscles. Even if the patient says that I'm not symptomatic, okay, look at the pulse octave, it might be like 70 or 60 or something like that. Upadum, they would say that I'm not symptomatic, fine. So here, what you have to do is you have to specifically look for some uh, uh, things. One is the work of breathing. Work of breathing, you could appreciate by looking at the accessory muscles like a sternocleidomastoid, scalene anterior, scalene medius, okay, intercostal indrawing, alienacy, paradoxical breathing, okay. All these are so important that it will tell you that patient has excessive work of breathing. And also the tidal volume they would take would be very large, okay. The rate might not be very high in, in some patients, but the tidal volume that take would be very large, okay. And also always measure the respiratory rate, okay. So you have to do the respiratory rate, you have to monitor, monitor the, uh, the, uh, the work of breathing as well as the saturation. And here, make sure that, see the patient is in your place, okay, it's, he's not at home. So here what you have to do is that you have to do frequent monitoring, it's not once a day affair. You make it sixth hourly, put it, put in a chart in your institute where you work, a center where you work, and ask somebody, sister, 
അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആരെങ്കിലും ട്രെയിൻഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരാളിനെ അടുത്ത് പൾസ് ഓക്സിമീറ്റർ ഇസ് ഈസി ഹാർട്ട് റേറ്റ് വുഡ് ഗെറ്റ് അലോങ് വിത്ത് ദാറ്റ് റെസ്പെക്ട് റേറ്റ് ഇസ് ഈസി ടു കാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് യു ക്യാൻ മെഷർ ദാറ്റ് നോട്ട് കാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് മെഷർ ദാറ്റ് യു ക്യാൻ ടേക്ക് സേ ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ സെക്കൻഡ്സ് എടുത്തിട്ട് മൾട്ടി ഫോണിൽ മൾട്ടിപ്ലൈ ചെയ്താലും മതി ഓക്കെ സോ യു ഹാവ് ടു ലുക്ക് ഇൻ ടു ദാറ്റ് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് ട്രെയിൻ നോസസ് ഓർ സംബഡി എൽസ് ടു ലുക്ക് ഫോർ ദ എക്സസീവ് വർക്ക് ഓഫ് ബ്രീതിങ് ബൈ ലുക്കിംഗ് ഇൻ യുവർ സ്റ്റോണോ ക്ലീഡോ മാസ്റ്റോയിഡ് സ്റ്റോണോ കലീൻ ആൻറ്റീരിയർ ഏലിയൻ ഏസി ആൻഡ് തിങ്സ് ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ലാർജ് ടൈറ്റ് വോൾ ഇംപ്രസ് ഷുഡ് ഓൾസോ ബി ആൻഡിഫൈഡ് സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ഹൗ യു യു ബ്രിങ് ഔട്ട് പേഷ്യൻസ് ഹു വുഡ് പ്രോബ്ലി ഗോ ഇൻ ടു ദ ഐ സി യു ഓർ വുഡ് ഗോ ബാഡ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് തിങ് ഈസ് യുവർ യു ടോക്ക് ടു ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഇഫ് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ക്യാൻ കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് അഗെയിൻ ഫ്രീക്വൻറ്റ് വെരി ഫ്രീക്വൻറ്റ്ലി ഡിസ്കസ്ഡ് ഇൻ ക്ലാസസ് സോ യു ക്യാൻ ആസ് ഇഫ് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ക്യാൻ കംപ്ലീറ്റ് സെൻറ്റൻസസ് ഓക്കെ യു ക്യാൻ ടോക്ക് ടു യു വിത്തൌട്ട് സ്റ്റോപ്പിംഗ് ഫോർ ബ്രത്ത് ഓക്കെ ക്യാൻ കംപ്ലീറ്റ് സെൻറ്റൻസസ് ഓർ യു ക്യാൻ ഡു ദ സിംഗിൾ ബ്രത്ത് കൗണ്ട് ശ്വാസം നീട്ടി എടുത്തിട്ട് എണ്ണം പറയണം അടുത്ത ബ്രത്ത് എടുക്കാതെ ഓക്കെ സോ വൺ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ഫ്രം വൺ ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ ട്വൻറ്റി ഈസ് ഓക്കെ സോ എനിത്തിങ് ലെസ് ദാൻ ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ ടെൻ വുഡ് ബി റിയലി ബാഡ് so uh, another important point that we have to look for the history is severe fatigue and myalgia they all those both would tell you that there is decreased oxygen supply to your peripheral tissues okay decreased the oxygen supply would be uh, exemplified with the severe fatigue okay and myalgia then see chalo ore nammal avada chellanthu they would talk uh, like something else like they would talk about irrelevant talk irikkam we will just uh, make fun of them clevo uh, enoga choichu po so adile kaari undu adile it might be because of a hypoxemic problem so altered mental status don't just neglect namaku pala patients just uh, they would be on niv and they would be like pulling out the mask all these things occur because of the severe hypoxemia that is causing problem in the central nervous system rather than like it might not be a icu delirium or things like that so any alteration in their mental status be very careful and you may have to step up your treatment uh another thing that we can all do in uh, both the primary and secondary centers though it is advised in patients who are hospitalized and who are on oxygen therapy is the awake proning okay awake proning or covid repositioning protocol carp protocol number protocols und or uh, covid repositioning uh, awake proning and things like that so you ask a patient to lie lateral position how much tolerated how much the patient can tolerate you ask them to lie like that so you can even do uh, this thing as a uh, mass ipo nammal idna samayathu ellarum charinu right lateral allengi adutha bell adikkan nerthu left prone adutha bell adikkan the left lateral and then adutha bell adikkan supine adu or program ait thana vekkyo okay so when you reposition yourself you know that there will be better ventilation perfusion matching in within the lung okay and that might even especially for patients who are on oxygen therapy okay remember the oxygen target is not very high it would be like you would be happy with a saturation of around 90 to 93 very happy with 93 percentage so don't get panicked uh, some of the patients might have a higher respiratory rate even in spite of giving your oxygenation okay okay it, that is okay for to a certain extent provided the saturation is more than uh, is around 93 and they don't have very much large work of breathing it is not just the respiratory rate because respiratory rate can go up because of the direct uh, stimulation of the brain that would produce high respiratory drive in covid patients it's not just because of the hypoxemia and things like that okay so these are the things that we should we can do and remember uh, we have evidence maximum evidence is for uh, steroids okay even Rem- remdesivir has not much of evidence nowadays so steroids uh, if the patient um, is going bad you start especially if it's after 5 days okay the go ahead with your steroids the guidelines says 8 mg od and you can very well or even methyl prednisone and you have the guidelines going in for severe cases you can go even for methyl produce methyl pred 1 to 2 mg per kg and you can start them uh, uh, after 5 uh, days the patient is not improving and is on oxygen therapy definitely steroid is indicated okay uh another thing that you have to plan is is transportation okay so you have to keep in mind that patient should not be going bad during transportation and nammal aaru monitor cheyinnala samayam so it is uh, very uncertain alle aa oru period valare uncertain ambulance la poya polum namaku 10 15 alle half hour no travel cheyanengil the patient can become bad so here what you can do is that uh, try to arrange some kind of assist devices 
uh, or oxygen supply uh, 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 delivery devices which can be given with the patient and if you can arrange a pulse oximeter you can send that with the ambulance or if the ambulance people have one you can ask them to monitor and very well it would be excellent if you have even a, a non-invasive ventilator or uh, we have some emergency uh, breathing assist devices that have come up recently in many hospitals you can request for one such basically it's a automated uh, ambu bag but still you can attach oxygen to that but whatever you can uh, do you have to at least start steroids in patients who are severely hypoxemic even one dose of steroids not being given uh, then we would think that if the patient had been given steroids a bit earlier, patient might not have gone bad. Okay, so these are the very few points that I would like. To, uh, anyway, it's very difficult to manage patients who are in ICU. We have refractory hypoxia; they don't respond to oxygen or even high, very high peak. So we are having very difficult times. I uh, hope you are also having. But I think some of these points you can, uh, especially the monitoring part, so that you can detect them early and send them to higher centers. Okay, and oxygen goal should be borne in mind that you don't have to. Aim for never aim for 98, 99. Look at the clinical picture. So, so very many patients would be happy with the saturation of 88 to 99. And these patients would be having ambulatory hypoxemia, desaturation, they would have um, breathlessness, they would uh, have tachycardia, they would have tachypnea with exertion. That is part of the game. Okay. So you just ask them to relax. Okay. So that is uh, uh, that probably might be uh, managed at higher centers, but uh, I at the base level, aim for a saturation of 90. So just enough oxygen, nothing more. Okay. And awake proning should be kept in mind. Steroids. So these are the things you should always keep in mind. Thank you.